I'm so glad I heard uh, the PCGN project. And, and I was I was sure. Step wisely talking about GHC uh, even emission or pollution. I think um, oceanic and then aerial and then landing, the pollution is getting up and do you have uh, any sorry evidences or any data about the landed pollution. I mean, talking about 3C railroad, uh, I think Europeans, they are glad to provide that kind of uh, information. I mean, I would like to know from my poor knowledge. Um, I think that can I, in talking of uh, your wonderful speech, but then can I ask something? Um, if we rejoin, I mean, the global associations, not necessarily on the UN structure, will that help? Actually, in Taipei City, uh, one of our mayors campaigned, he started, I mean, uh, the garbage or the charges in that forum ground. Then people are getting much more expertise in, I mean, arranging the charges, something like that. The lesson, the waste, everything, all included. The second thing is, uh, I think you still start from Taipei City. We started to give those who, I mean, temporarily stopped the vehicles or even motorcycles. Less than three minutes to turn off the, turn off uh, the engines. Otherwise, they'll get a, a ticket. The ticket is not a good ticket. So if we join, I mean, we are, it's kind of a but, um, but no. I think the top-down issue was mentioned. Would that help? I mean, I would like to know. And can you do something about the help from your side? Thank you. Thank you very much for your questions. Um, our methodology is we first collect the data uh, to know what happened. Um, but what happened uh, do not provide answers to what is going on. The mechanism or the process, just as you ask, uh, the source of the pollution, where are they come from? So we build models. You need to run the computer models to understand our measurement. So basically, what we are doing is we use the time series data, time series or this uh, data to understand the reason why we got this peak or why this downward, where are they come from. So, but to do that, we need to also use other data from the wind or from the meteorological measurement as well. By combining with the meteorological data, then we will be able to work out backward to understand the source of those uh, emissions. So that's the beauty of the measurement. So basically, you know, something like when in North Korea, they explore a bomb. People do not need to go there. They will say, this is really a nuclear bomb. So this time is real. So last time is not nuclear. <laughs> right, so uh, that's my answer to your questions. So basically, we need to take the good data and uh, so with that good data, and we are confident about the quality of our good data, then we can work very hard to build the models to understand what is at our heads, to understand the, the reason to that. Yeah, so as I've been taught a speaker should never stand between the audience and lunch. So I'll try to make this quick, but just briefly, the issue of what makes people change their behavior is a very complicated one. And there's evidence on both sides. We know that sometimes education can be very effective if the issue is something people can do themselves and if there's not too much hardship or expense in doing it. So in the United States, one good example we know of is that when the evidence about the ozone hole first began to develop, American people started buying far fewer aerosol products just on their own, spontaneously. And one of the interesting things about that, which I've always thought has not gotten enough attention, 
is it was mainly women who did that. Because women are the primary consumers in most cultures, and it turned out that a lot of women, when they realized that their hairspray or their deodorants were potentially destroying the ozone layer, they thought, well, I don't need to do that, right? And so there was a very, very substantial decline in the sale of those products before the government even did anything. So that's a very empowering thing to know about. But at the same time, we also know that people don't you know, replace their windows or install photovoltaics on their roof, even when they could. And in California, where I live, most people could reduce their electricity bills to almost zero if they install photovoltaic electricity. Why don't they do it? Well, it's pretty obvious. It's pretty easy to stop buying hairspray. It's much more difficult and expensive to install a photovoltaic system on your roof. So some of it has to do with the expense and the inconvenience. And if the expense and inconvenience are very great, then we know people need help. So in Berkeley, they instituted a program where people could borrow the money from the city government to install photovoltaics. And then they could repay the loan in their mortgage payments. So that was a very clever idea, but then the Mortgage Lending Association stopped it on the grounds that it was a violation of mortgage lending law. Okay, so that tells us where the government comes in, that the regulatory structure can be a very powerful incentive or disincentive for certain kinds of actions. And so then you get into much more difficult questions about government and governance. So you know what you end up with is an all of the above answer. Yes, people can be motivated to do the right thing through education, but also sometimes it requires help, and sometimes it requires changes in the law, and sometimes it requires penalties. And you know, if we have time tomorrow, I'll maybe talk a little bit more about the penalties in the history of tobacco, because we know that in the history of tobacco, for a variety of different reasons, many people did stop smoking on their own just based on education, uh, but many people did not, in part because of the addictive quality of tobacco, but ultimately it took negative sanctions against the industry to get the industry to stop doing some of the various things that they were, in fact, doing. Okay, I think, well, we are already 10 minutes over. <laughs> so, I'd like to thank everyone for this uh, panel discussion. Have a lunch. Likewise. <laughs>